Welcome to Kellen's Petty Talk Show. For episode number five, I'm pleased to have J. Sue Garcia joining us today. Most of you know him as Rod from the 1984 classic horror film A Nightmare on Elm Street. As always, this episode is sponsored by Pie Bake Shop, delicious pies crafted in the heart of Los Angeles and delivered fresh to your door. Just call 818-986-1441, that's 818-986-1441, or follow them on Instagram at Pie Bake Shop, that's P-I Bake Shop. If at any point during this episode you find yourself wanting an awesome and exclusive 8x10 from the one and only J. Sue Garcia, here are the details. The price is $37.50 and includes an 8x10 of your choice, which includes the autograph, a quote, and can be personalized if you so desire. I also have the info pertaining to the signings of personalized items, so if you're interested, shoot me a direct message at Kellen's Petty Talk Show on Instagram, and I'll walk you through how to purchase. The instructions will also be available in the description of wherever you're hearing this, whether it be Spotify, Podbean, or YouTube. Our good friend Ed Gage will be joining the discussion today. Anyways, let's start the show. How you doing? Hi, how are you? So it's Ed and Kellen. Yes. Mm-hmm. Uh, what a pleasure to be uh, quarantine, locked down, <laughs> nightmare on Elm Street. You know, oh, we're so I, happy to have you. I'm glad yeah. to be here. I like the innovation. I like the adap- the adaptability the, to be able to adapt. I just made exactly. up. Exactly. I'm Don King. I make up stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. So basically, how, how have you been doing during the quarantine? I, I loved it. It's uh, that's how we got hooked up. Is I, I like, uh, in certain the, aspects in, in the entrepreneur kind of way. I like uh, opportunities. You know, unfortunate yeah. there are people that are passing away and they're going to the other realms, mm-hmm. and then there's opportunity for all of us to really go in, check us out, uh, see see movies, check out our own nightmares. Uh, <laughs> accept ourselves as we are there's a lot of that and then i was like well hey i need to make some money and i and i (laughs) and before the coronavirus i retired from acting and i retired from going to conventions and i was like no i'm gonna make them come to me because it really is a unless you're robert england it really is a loss to to fly to a convention Mm -hmm. to do all that although it's great to meet your fans you lose money, you know, at the yeah. end. And I thought, well, I can make money. I ID'd my photos. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> I basically uh, trolled Facebook to, for all my fans. And, uh, <laughs> and it was really interesting. It was fun. And I got to meet you and Ed and a lot of people that are younger generation. I'm 50. I, I forgot. I think I'm 57. Yeah. Uh, and so it's great to see, you know. When I would go to the conventions, I would see seven and eight year olds, you know, mm-hmm. being dragged to the convention because their parents were <laughs> nuts. <laughs> well, for especially us being a younger generation, we might have a couple of questions for you that might surprise you, like about your past work. Go so, ahead. But, so yeah, but anyways, so you so all you let's just jump into it then. So, so, I'm, so I'm by the way, it's a pleasure to be here. I really I'm honored to to be interviewed by you guys, and I really like what you guys are doing, you know, it's, it's the young kids world now, you know? Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs> now we're all about it. We've been, we've been Elm street fans since day one. So yeah. right on. Is it true that when you were a child, your acting talents were discovered by your ability to cry on command? Uh, I noticed that as I was getting robbed in Newark, New Jersey, that I, I cried and the guys mm-hmm. felt bad for me. They were stealing my bicycle and I was this really young, you know, I was super innocent and they were like hey give me they always the rumor was don't go around the block and i was always adventurous i did i found the bullies and they were like give me your bike and i cried and they gave me the bike back that was that was a good thing and a bad thing because then i realized oh the beginnings of manipulation yeah (laughs) but then that was honest then in my film career i found it hard to cry (laughs) on on command wow so tell us, how did you first get involved in the industry? Uh, I I don't know. I think I was, uh, I don't know how I got involved. I would say the real thing is I, I knew that I, I got lucky and met Richard Gere's agent, uh, a man, just a great agent, probably one of the best is Ed Lamato. 
and he was Richard Gere's agent. I don't know if he was Betty Davis's agent. Michelle Pfeiffer was about to blow up on Scarface. Mm -hmm. And Richard Gere was about to blow up again on Officer and a Gentleman. You follow the time period? Yeah. Yep. And everybody was all about uh, you must study with Peggy Fury at the Loft Studio. There was Nick Cage. There was uh, Sean Penn was already a star. And he came out of the Loft Studio. So a lot of actors gravitated towards Peggy Fury, Loft Studio. I got lucky. I was about to quit. The main thing was study, study, study. Uh, I, my last audition, my first gig was Fame, the television show. I was Coco's boyfriend and I was some dancer. I couldn't dance. I thought I was going to be James Dean and I didn't work for two years. About 1984, it's the Olympics. I'm going to quit. And uh, at my audition is with Wes Craven. And I get the role. Uh, I'm supposed to be. Um, oh, no, I just get it. And then he asked me, hey, sit in on these auditions. We're, we're going to be auditioning. We need a jock. And the jock would be Johnny Depp, actually. Wes Craven went <laughs> completely different, his choices. <laughs> well, his daughter was the one that chose Johnny Depp, right? I don't I know. So. I don't, I didn't, it could have been, I don't know. Johnny, I think, it, yeah. I'd like to say that we were all beautiful and cute. So Johnny was super beautiful and, and you know, cute and innocent. Everybody was innocent, man. We were like yeah. 20, but he was married. He was in a way really? a lot a lot more experienced and he was a rock he was in a rock band and i was somewhat homeless living on people's couches and uh and so we would always go to johnny's uh house the his wife would feed us and we would watch with heather and amanda we became very close with wes's wife uh ex-wife uh she's an amazing person and they were Wes and her were like our our parents, and we were uh, we would spend the night watching. I mean, you know, what what did we have VHS? So we were watching VHS. Yeah. There was no internet. You don't Google. Oh, what's Wes Craven's other films? So you went to the video store and got Left House on the Left or House on the Left or mm -hmm. uh, House the, on the, left. the Hills Tells Have the Eyes, eyes. And then you'd be watching and getting like, oh, yeah. And then we were all trying to make Hamlet out of Nightmare on Elm Street. So we were like, nah, man, we got to make this different than slasher films. Because at that at that time, Friday the 13th was the best. It was it was at the, 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 just to give you the scenario. Friday the 13th was killing everything. Mm -hmm. It was just it was incredible. And then even more West, than Halloween. I wasn't a Halloween fan. I didn't even like I just thought it was, I'm sorry, I thought it was kind of stupid, but it was like, <laughs> uh, but the thing that was killing it was uh, Friday the 13th. I'm sorry, that I think that was my interpretation. I lived in Hollywood Boulevard. Friday yeah. the 13th was occupying all the theaters. And then they just kept doing one, two, three, whatever, I don't remember. And then Nightmare came around and, and had a story. It had a content. It had content story, and so uh, where was I? Yeah. Um, so uh, talking about Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, so go ahead, hit me, hit me with some more questions. Yeah. Did you foresee a Nightmare on Elm Street becoming what it is today? You know, like turning into a huge movie franchise, and of course, Freddy Krueger becoming a huge icon in pop culture. No, not at all. I mean this. I mean, who knew that who knew that Freddy Krueger would be the star of the show? And uh and I, I I only knew Wes for a small period of time, but Wes was gone from the franchise after one or two, I don't know, I don't remember, and we would play racquetball. Wasn't really and then Wes blew up when he did Scream. Did he do Scream? All those yeah. movies? Scream in 96. What, you, what 96, you did last yeah. summer is all just a re regurgitation of Nightmare on Elm Street kids. Mm -hmm. And he just left. Uh, he left the franchise, or I don't know why he did that. And then he became very commercial. I The last time I, I worked with Wes was uh, Vampire in Brooklyn. 
Uh, okay. Oh. He gave me a spot there. Mm, okay. Did you keep in touch with him at all? Like yeah, we played racquetball. He was a racquetball player. Then he got busy. He was uh, working for, yeah. last time I knew, he was having hardships with funny, funny enough, Miramax. Mm -hmm. And then uh, and then he was at Warner Brothers quite a bit and making all, remember that old lady, that cranky old lady and the... she gets killed with a basketball in the face? Mm-hmm. And, um, yes, the girl from the Goonies? Yes. And Ramsey. And Ramsey, yeah. Yeah. So he went off that way, and and then he partnered up with some woman, and they were making uh, great films, actually. I think mm -hmm. he was stepping away from horror films. Yeah. So we're going to actually go into a question that might be a bit of a surprise to you. You had worked on two episodes of the TV show Miami Vice back in the 80s, that of which was a huge series for its time. How did you land your role in the first episode you worked on? And also, tell us what it was like working with Don Johnson and Philip Michael Thomas. Uh, the first time... Okay, so I did... I was up, up and coming. Uh, actually, uh -huh. just to go back a little bit, Johnny Depp gives me the script uh, on the set of Nightmare to Gotcha. And I take off on Gotcha. Mm -hmm. And my career is taken off. Uh, I can't say they're mistakes, but I don't take Batteries Not Included, the, the Spielberg movie. Spielberg. Mm -hmm. I sit on La Bamba and what's his name gets gets it. Uh, and, Diamond Phillips? Yeah. Yeah. And I uh, know um, Isai Morales. And then I go and take some weird movie in Colombia. So... My agent, Ed Lamato, uh, says, um, at, the, at the time, if you were on the right, if it was a good sweet spot, you didn't have to audition. You just got the parts. So every young Latin actor went through Miami Vice. You know, Benicio Del Toro. I don't know if Andy Garcia went through it, but I went through it. And then I got two Miami Vices, but the first one was really cool. And Don Johnson and the, I forgot the... The black actor was his name, Philip Michael Thomas. Philip was so nice to me. Actually, when I was working the first time, Philip had the charisma. You know, it was very, very interesting. He was, he was super cool. And then Don was Don was cool. And then the second one, Don had all this like he was the lead. But Philip was always cool to, and it was a crazy set. It was fun. You know. He, you're you know you got weapons and you're shooting at each other mm -hmm. so close to one another and it was you know uh it was not far from the activities that were happening in miami you know this is the 80s if you just do any mm -hmm. kind of any kind of chronological where escobar was and what was going down um uh, it miami was miami just became pastel like a refurbished refurbishing of pastel sort of that mm -hmm. that that uh, art deco look miami yeah. vice brought it back so don johnson was cool i didn't really they were so we were all so young and we were all so fresh uh i got I, everybody was doing you know it was incredible money you know uh you fly first class they fly you first class from and then they put you in a hotel in Miami Beach. I mean, jeez, you don't nice. get that kind of treatment anymore. Everybody, no, not at all. You know, I don't know. Things kind of went south, I guess. But uh, nowadays, everybody hits you up with, "Hey, man, do you have a local person you can stay at?" <laughs> and um, <laughs> here's a coach ticket. Um, and part of it is, uh, you know, things dwindled. Uh, but Miami Vice was fantastic. It was, uh, it was. I mean, what's his name? Michael Bay. My uh, Michael Mann. Michael Mann was probably yeah. one of the greatest. I mean, you saw um, Collateral with Tom Cruise. Yeah, you know, yeah, that was amazing. Michael Mann is is bad. You know, he's like, there's no, you know, I can't say anything bad about him. It's not his fault. Mm -hmm. Sometimes the show would just do what the show does, but Michael Mann has a look, a style. Miami Vice always had a hit song, 
It was always, what did someone say? It was always an MTV video. Every, every episode yeah. was an MTV video, you know. Was that a stunt double in the latter episode you did in Miami Vice? The one where you fell into the water? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah I wasn't sure. Yeah, there's no way they... You know, in those days, you, as a young like guy, you, you, <laughs> you want to do it, but there's no way they let you do it. And, and, and I wouldn't do it. That's the river. The yeah, river. Uh, yeah. The second role I did in Miami Vice was with Julio Pacheco. Julio Pacheco is... Uh, is that the one where I pull the drug dealer and I throw him into the water? Yeah, well, those yeah, like are you, you guys pulled him over. Yeah, they took yeah. an episode, that uh, and they based it on the River Cops, and the River Cops were corrupt cops that would steal drugs from uh, drug dealers and kill them and throw them in rivers and shit. So Pacheco is uh, Andy Garcia's friend who passed away. Julio Julio Macha, Machaso. Uh, Julio Machaso, God bless him. But uh, yeah, the second Miami Vice, there was a lot more of a better character. The first one, I was like a Metro cop undercover. Yeah, yeah. And, and then I, you got to you got to go from being a good guy to a bad guy. <laughs> I was like a river cop. Yeah. The, well, in those days, you can get you can keep working on a show, and they give you different parts, and nobody can recognize you. The I did Murder She Wrote. I did two Murder She Wrotes because. Oh wow. They just hire good actors and trustworthy people and then give you a different face. How'd you like uh, working with Ben Stiller and Jennifer Aniston in Along Came Polly? And how did you like doing the salsa dance lessons? <laughs> I loved, uh, you know, we worked really hard on that. Uh, Jennifer was super busy with Almighty. Uh, All right. That she was, I never seen a, a person work so hard. She was working on the Bruce Almighty finishing friends and and moonlighting on our movie essentially and uh and i i got to rehearse with her but i had to wait like two hours i hung out with her and brad in new york it was kind of cool i really liked and then there's a great hairdresser called um i mean jennifer aniston's hairdresser the coolest guy ever um, you can look him up. He's a really cool Chris Chris McMillan. This guy is like this is when you look at what makes Jennifer look with the hair and other women, it's Chris McMillan, you know. But anyway, uh they I worked for many weeks with uh or maybe a week or so with a great dancer actually. I, that that they picked that looked just like her. They tattooed her her back, you know, the the back but yeah, the little, yeah, the they, tailbone. They did whatever. this girl was a replica of Jennifer. They did her hair. I rehearsed. Mm -hmm. And then the purpose, you know, the purpose was to get Jennifer jealous. You know, Jennifer was sitting like, you know, movie star. And I just, I knew, look, man, I'm nobody on that movie, but I'm, but I'm going to steal the show. I'm going to steal the damn show. Oh, you totally stole the show in that movie. Come on. <laughs> and so, <laughs> definitely. So Jennifer, as soon as they said action, she was mine. I'm not letting any. I don't give a shit. You can <laughs> fire me. But I knew about acting, and I respect acting. And and uh, I'm very competitive. I did it with Benicio. I'm very competitive. Ben all these guys don't 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 think people are angels. It's all about who's gonna steal the fucking frame, the show pull focus absolutely and i knew that if i knew x on the x where we start and when they said action i had prepared so much that she was unprepared so you could see that i was running her <laughs> and then ben and the director what's his name he was uh, the director he's Let's the see. writer of zoolander uh hamburg right Long can call you. John Honestly, Hamburg. Sure. The, the uh, yeah, John Hamburg. Yeah. This director is one of the greatest directors ever. I totally loved him. He was, um, he's the ego. He's the, uh, uh, Ben's his alter ego. So mm -hmm. um, Hamburg would just put Ben in situations and Ben would just react. So, you know, Hamburg would come up to me and say, grab Ben's ass. The whole, the whole, <laughs> 
the whole salsa lesson was improvised and not in the script because my character kept developing. They loved my character. Oh, wow. And so all that. And then uh, I grab his ass, Ben slaps me, and I slap him back. So that that, so that was, was just that all on, on impulse. <laughs> that's all on impulse. Ben is genius when the camera's on. Oh, of course. Um, and 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 an un, and the person that I loved the most, though I didn't have, you know, it's nothing to say anything about any actors. Uh, ben had security, and Ben was very focused because this was his film, and he's producing, and he's a star. Sometimes you need that. The people that were totally open to me were uh, Jennifer. Um, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, his, you know, the great mm -hmm. Seymour Hoffman was fantastic. His trailer was open. Amazing man. You know, they're not closed. His shades yep. are open. You can come up and say hi to him. And mm -hmm. the, what's the woman's name? The one that cheats on Ben Stiller, his first wife in the movie. Uh, she was uh, in Will, uh, she was in, in, uh, uh, the Will show. She's a roommate Will, of a gay guy. Will and Grace. Will and Grace. Yeah. Uh, Debbie, Wasn't her Debbie name Lisa? Massing. Debbie Massing. Debra. Debra Massing. Debra Massing. Yeah, yeah, Debra. She was amazing in it. She was yeah. a great actress, man. She's like... Uh, Bangs she, the scuba driver. She, yeah, she's hilarious. <laughs> I love that actor. I forgot his name. Oh, he was so funny. <laughs> he, he could do any voice. And I feel like I've seen him in something else. But he's done it. He did La Caja Falls with... Uh, with uh, Robin Williams, he played the gay Cuban okay. kid. The, <laughs> I mean, the, this guy is the best. Oh, he was so funny. Um, but uh, Ben was really generous to me. Uh, I was, uh, and uh, and they there was a scene they cut out of New York rollerblading, and the whole thing was the 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 whole line of the real line. Did you see the movie? I've seen a long camp out, yeah. Well, the what made the director, I, I didn't want the movie. I didn't care about the movie. And I really loved Benicio, the way he would take language and destroy the characters. The usual suspect was a really cool. And I started to play around with language. And the, the, the line on the script said, hey, I'm gay. Oh, will you teach me salsa, Javier? And I'm like, oh, no, no. Leave my girlfriend alone. And I'm a guy, Ruben, yeah, yeah, he was I'm like, gay. I'm gay. My yeah. <laughs> my boyfriend Hector plays the keyboard in the house band. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I'm homosexual. I'm gay. Those are the lines, and I'm like, you know what? This is so stupid. I'm gonna really say it like I don't give a shit, uh -huh. and they're not gonna they're not going to understand it. So I made everybody laugh in the audition room. Yeah, yeah. When yeah. I said I'm gay, like really yeah, bad yeah the way you say it, I'm so gay. Great. I, Ruben, I am gay. I'm homosexual. I'm homosexual. No, I say I'm homosexual. <laughs> I didn't even catch that. <laughs> so, so John Hamburg shits his pants. He's like, what? <laughs> it's totally unaudible. Yeah. And they asked me to come in again and change, change it to homosexual. But I was like, nah, man. Because I really, I just love Benicio's twist. So yeah. I was... I was trying to understand his mind and the twisting of words. And, and in some sense, what do I care that you understand what I say? Uh, I'm not going to be in the movie much. It's, that's my thing. But I'm going to make a lot of money on the movie. And I'm going to dance mm -hmm. with her. And I have a surprise. Because the surprise of the skit is to tell. I have to look straight and then tell everybody I'm gay. It's hilarious. Yeah. Because he's all he's all like... I'm going to steal his girl. So I'm going to destroy it. I'm going to destroy. I'm going to make the joke, but destroy the whole thing by speaking completely. What the hell? So I'm gay. Yeah. I mean, I parked my car once at a sushi bar and the, 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 the guy says, come on, say the line. So then I, <laughs> so I look, I, I, by the way, I, I heard a lot of dubbings in different countries from the French to the Italians and they did the same inflection. They have other actors yeah. that do your voice. So anyway, that was, that killed it. That's how I got the role. Is uh, No, it's so funny. And that, that whole scene takes place in the bathroom. You're like, I'm gay. <laughs> I was scared love, to death because uh, uh, 
I thought I was going to be fired on the set because I was two hours late. For oh. that scene or for? For that scene, dude. I was about an hour late. What happens is I get anxiety. And, yeah. And... Uh, and when you're when you're late in those kinds of movies, man, they fuck, they fire you, and um, yeah. you can see my heart beat, like you can see me breathing hard in that because it, it, it ha- I I had to do it in two scenes. Uh-huh. Jeff uh, John Hamburg worked quick, just like Soderbergh, so you do things in one two scenes. You don't have like for the time. oh let me let me do one more, oh uh, John. Yeah. So. Uh... Collateral Damage seemed like a very intense movie to work on, like with all the fire, the gunshots, oh, yeah. and explosions. Was it a difficult <coughs> film to work on? Collateral Damage was great. Um, I didn't do any of the firefighting. I was the revolutionary guy down in, in Mexico. Uh, again, my career was in the t- kind of like, I don't know what the heck I'm doing. I'm either, I'm either doing some soft porn for Cinemax you know what I mean by we call it Skinamax. They always <laughs> when your career Skinamax. when your career's lost, you know they hire you for nothing. You're a good-looking guy and you're having sex with a married woman, and then there's murder involved, and you, generally you're making love on a pool table. That's the best though. And it, <laughs> oh, yeah. it's not it's not when you're doing ten of those. Like I did one. I needed the money. Then after that, yeah. you're like, what? And then you realize you come on around three in the morning and friends are calling you. Hey, man, I just saw your film. Or they're in Italy. Because <laughs> <laughs> these, uh, these films are sold for content uh, in, in the world. And uh, yeah. they're not necessarily Academy Award material. Mm-hmm. So Collateral, I was done. But I had an audition. And, and it was to, to, do, to play a firefighter, like little tiny parts, right? Super little small parts. I put my my good friend Jr. John Roger. He says, uh, "I'm going to China. It's 2000, the year 2000." I'm like, "I'm not going to go back and meet the director, who mm. directed The Fugitive, by the way." Um, but I'll put it on tape. So my I hate putting things on tape. This is back in the day where mm. the iPhone now is genius. But this is back in the day where you would get a camera, put yourself on tape, and send a VC a VHS to the that was progressive yes. then. Pain in the ass. So, but now you can just send an MP4 over the email, over Dropbox, and you're good. So yeah. this was a hassle, you know. You so anyway, I knew how to edit, and I edited. I I edited 16 track special effects, on, and then my camera strobed. It, it broke and strobed, and we did all the scenes in an abandoned construction site, with my friend Rick Ojeda. We put titles. We made a movie out of it and sent it in. <laughs> I got the part. I was in China, and they said, "Dude, you have the part." But the part was remember, I auditioned like four, eight pages of different small characters: cops, guerrilla mm-hmm. fighters, this and that, one-liners. And I put it all together and made a story out of it. When they fly me to to Mexico to do the, because I I end up getting. Uh, hired to play the the Colombian uh, revolutionary guys that blew up his wife. Yeah. Um, so uh, when I get it, the producer takes me aside and said, you are one nut. We had to hire you because we wanted to know how the hell did you do that? So the guys treated me great. Arnold was fantastic. I was sometimes in his trailer playing chess. <laughs> or outside he liked chess playing mm-hmm. and uh he would walk by me all the time because i lost to him so he would walk by a lot and he would walk by the set and he would be like um loser no way <laughs> what are you doing you loser so i was you know i, I we became somewhat quick friends because politically i knew some people that he knew so when he would leave the set, uh, I knew a lot of people. Uh, he'd go to an art gallery fundraiser, and a friend of mine would say, "Hey, Jesu says I'm a friend of Jesus." And, and, and then so when Arnold would come back to the set, he goes, "You seem to know a lot of people, you know." And uh, mm-hmm. so they, so and then after the the, the shoot, we I would get invited to. He was about to run for governor, and so we got. He did a lot of good cigar 
uh, cigar nights. You smoke cigars and you yeah you mm-hmm. eat schnitzel schnitzel or whatever and then schnitzel and then you hang out with him but he was super cool uh the set was great the director's fantastic warner brother huge a lot of money when you do a Uh studio film yeah andrew davis i think he was like he did a lot of warner brothers productions like with steven seagal films chuck norris and all those martial arts stars in the 90s andrew davis is like an insane director like he knows he shot so many angles on this that I saw the editing and it's really great editing. I mean, you know, mm-hmm. the movie was, unfortunately the movie wasn't great because it was on the heels of 9-11, dude. Yeah, and yeah, that, that screwed it up crushed, the whole release. It crushed, I mean, the guy's a firefighter. It crushed the movie. It's, yep. uh, it's release. And you know, the terrorists, uh, luckily they picked on Colombians, but the real script I heard were Arabs. You know how pro, how prof, prophetic is that? Yeah, and yeah. Uh, or because yeah, the movie was supposed to come out less than a month after nine eleven, and it got pushed to February. Yeah, I did. Uh, we were soldiers at the same time that got pushed. Oh, okay. Yeah, but you know, I mean, collateral damage still holds up to this day. It's a fantastic film. It's great. Yeah, we just rewatched it's, it. We love it. It's, I think it's going to hold up even stronger as you get away from it. But the the initial release yeah. was crazy. It was weird. Yeah, but. The, uh, they were able to spin it and help firefighters and things like that. I think Arnold did a lot of fundraising. Yeah. Tell us about Cliff Curtis and John Leguizamo. I mean, John seems like a character. John's great. Chris is my favorite. I love Chris so much. That guy stole every Latin part from every Latin actor. And he's from New Zealand. <laughs> but, <laughs> really? but I don't know. I forgot his name. You know, Jabba, uh, Bubba the, Jabba the Hutt? Jabba, Jabba the Hutt. No, no, the the, no, no, not Jabba the Hutt. Bubba, <laughs> Bubba Fett, Bubba Fett, Bubba, Bubba Fett. Yeah, the actor. Oh yeah, who oh, who was in Once Were Warriors, or <laughs> yeah, um, he's New Zealand too. One day, Jr. John Roger and I were giving Cliff Curtis and Job uh, Bubba Fett. I don't think he was Bubba Fett yet. We were giving them yeah. a ride. They were here just. I was hanging around Cliff Curtis a lot. I really liked him a lot. Yeah. And uh, he's he's a really, just a, a sweet guy. And, and so is the other actor. I forgot. Forgive me, but that guy's an amazing actor. Mm-hmm. You said uh, Boba Fett. Wait, was it for Attack of the Clones? Like the the, the newer one at he's the time? The, he's the New Zealand guy. He's, uh, let me see. Uh, it, wonder Daniel it, Logan, Jeremy Bullock, no. Reckon Meyer, Don Franks. Unless it was Django Fett, then like the was father. Oh, Django, Django, the Django father, Fett. yeah. Yeah, I was gonna the father, say, yeah. Django, Django Fett. Fett was played by Tumura Morrison. That's it. Yeah, Tum- yeah, Tumura. I think. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not the biggest Star Wars fan. So anyway, sure. uh, have you seen um, the Rabbit? Okay, once we're warrior, here it is. Once we're warriors, it's. Uh... Did you see the Jojo Rabbit? Oh yeah, I love Jojo Rabbit. That director is amazing. Uh, I got to work with him in in Sunday. Taika Waititi. Yes, he's amazing. Well, they're all oh, friends. The awesome. They're all friends. Taika Waititi. Yeah, his name is Tumara Morrison. Morrison. Yeah. That guy uh, was best friends with Cliff, and uh, well, I seen him. I seen his film in uh, in Telluride Film Festival. He was up and coming. He's huge. Great, probably one of the best actors I've seen. And, and I think he did The Island of Dr. Moreau with Brando. Oh, really? Yeah. But Cliff Curtis is probably one of the best actors. You see him in Blow. Love Blow. Did you ever see Will Ryder? Uh, A long time ago. Yeah. Oh, yeah. my God. I saw Blow like recently, though, like a year ago. I mean, he plays Escobar probably better than most people. Yeah. And, and he had the hair. He had the... It made you think, did the Latins coming out of South America run into the Maoris in New Zealand? Because there's always been that, because we look the same. If you look, if you see the, the, if you see the line from, from Chile, from Chile, Santiago, Chile, to Easter Island, to Tahiti, New Zealand, Australia, there's a Polynesian thing. But um, but sometimes I, he would call me. 
we'd be hanging out. No, on the set of Collateral Damage, he'd be auditioning for a training day. He played the Mexican gangs guy, the gangster. Remember uh -huh. who lets who lets Ethan Hawke go in the bathtub? He has shotgun mm -hmm. in his face. I mean, so anyway, Cliff Curtis is a great actor. Yeah. Tell us about Predator 2. Predator 2, I needed money desperately. Uh, yeah. I lost the role to Judd Nelson, thank God, or Judd, Judd Nelson or Judd Hirsch to mm -hmm. uh, Breakfast Club. That was my role. Oh, damn. Judd Nelson. And yeah. I, it was just Judd Nelson, right? So yeah, I, I was, a, know you went I was a complete asshole, a hole to the casting director. <laughs> yeah. And I blew that role, but thank God, because any, anybody in that role, their career died. But anyway, the um, <laughs> unfortunately, um, but Nelson, oh, the casting director, you know, I did something stupid. So uh -huh. she, all those years went by and she would do casting director workshops and she would tell students what not to do. And she would bring me, she would make the example of what I did because I pounded the casting director's desk and made everything fly off. And I did this, I did the virtual <laughs> scene in front of her and which is a no, no, you don't really get that close to a casting director to scare her. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I went to her, she's fantastic, Jackie Birch great lady and she felt sorry for me and gave me a a, a talk a talkie talkie made a couple grand i still get residuals mm -hmm. and i worked with reuben blades and uh i was one of the cops as they as they move across the police station and so mm -hmm. you see reuben blades and uh, danny glover it's before they get all they all get killed in the bush i think i'm arresting yeah, so, uh, i think i'm 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 interviewing a hooker, like I'm, I'm interrogating a hooker. I busted her. <laughs> <laughs> Over the time, you've gotten to work with some amazing actors. Are there any actors or even directors that you have not worked with yet? If you did come out of retirement and all that, that's somebody you'd want to work with one day. Um, I would love to work with Spielberg because I had my chance to, and I didn't. I didn't take it. What was that for? But I can't do that to myself. So I, battery's not included. I actually turned them down. Oh, okay. Really? And and when you turn down Spielberg, it's you know you don't. But I don't really care yeah. because, um, you know, like I like Spielberg, but it but it do I want to work with Spielberg? I like the way he works, but I did get a taste of Robert Redford, and uh, uh -huh. he coached a lab. He he directed me in a lab, in um, in uh, in in Sundance. Sundance uh, Film Festival is one thing, but there's a summer thing that he does called Sun uh, Sundance Lab, and he he sends up directors, young directors. That's how Reservoir Dogs got made and things like that. Mm -hmm. So they get to write their script and people read it. But I would say Robert Redford would be uh, a comfortable director. I would love to work again with Soderbergh. That would be three. I did Traffic and Che with him. He is the probably an Andy Garcia. There, there's a there, there's just people that know you and feel you, and you just do it. And I come from. I started, unfortunately, with the school of like the director has to save me and get me in there, like like Francis Ford Coppola. But then I I learned the school of Soderbergh, which is you've got two takes, <laughs> you better come prepared. And in the school mm -hmm. of Soderbergh, 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 um, you don't hang out in your trailer. If you hang out in your trailer, you've missed your part, your chance to. And he's got the camera on his shoulder. And he looks over at you and he goes, go ahead. And it's that, I mean, that I that became fun, uh, I would say. And there's some other, the Atlas Shrug director, Paul mm -hmm. Johnson. He was amazing. Uh, I, I don't know anyone that I would want to work with that, uh, 
Yeah, I don't I don't have any. You know, I directed two films. Then I realized, wow, how much of a pain in the ass. I saw the other side of it. How much yeah, of Yeah, you're not a fan. What a dick I was uh oh, to really? directors. And then because a director has a director has the whole picture and an actor wants attention. An actor generally, you know, Mm-hmm. If he if he hasn't done psychological work, and I have, uh, you know, mm-hmm. you want attention, daddy, take care of me, or approval, or recognition. Yeah. If you've got those problems, you're not focusing on the work. And when I started directing and producing, I was like, wow, this is a big picture. And so mm-hmm. you, you see people like Spielberg and Soderbergh, they hire people that they don't have to babysit. They mm-hmm. come to the game ready to go. That's why casting is important. Mm-hmm. So back to Elm Street. Yes, sir. Just curious, when that came out, did you expect it to be as big as it was? No, I, when I it was first came out. You know, it opened as I recall at the Dome Theater, mm-hmm. and I went. Oh, really? The Cinerama oh, Dome. Cinerama Dome. I sat in the back. Oh, okay. And I wanted to be recognized, like, yeah, that's me. Uh, but yeah. but it was the house was packed. Uh huh. And I was like, "Wow, I'm a star," you know. Yeah. But it's so funny because you're not. The movie, uh, this thing's taken over, and you're just a dude walking out of a theater, and mm-hmm. I don't know, you know. And, and then there's so much to say about what is success and the philosophy of all that, but mm-hmm. the excitement of being in the back of the theater and watching it packed. And watching people's reactions, and there were African Americans. Sorry that I said black people, but I want to just clean up my language. But African Americans, <laughs> yeah, I yeah. would sit behind them because they were the most vocal. You know, oh, in, a, in a horror film, they're like, "Oh shit, don't go down there!" Yeah, oh shit, <laughs> get the fuck out of and there. <laughs> if you go to New York and you you sit behind African Americans or Puerto Ricans, they're like, "No, oh yeah, don't go. Yeah. No, that's bullshit. That's kill him." And yeah. right on Broadway, you'd be getting, all, you know, sort of a virtual. So I knew that the film was hot, but I didn't know that it was going to be a franchise. But at that point, my career took off like Heather kept doing the franchise. And that's mm-hmm. and so did Freddy Krueger. I I was done in the first picture. Yeah. What were your thoughts on the sequel that followed and? Do you have any favorites of the other sequels that came? I have not seen it, to be fair, but okay. I'm not a sequel guy. I think that uh, you don't redo art. Uh, I think Wes mm-hmm. is the guy. That's his. So yeah, when absolutely. they redo franchises, that's what it's called. It's a franchise. And so it's all about yeah. money. But it's not a bad thing because they're updating a franchise. It's like McDonald's. Mm-hmm. So. Exactly. Who cares who works at McDonald's? We're going to still sell hamburgers. So that's essentially the cast. Who cares who the cast is as long as they sell Freddy Krueger? But I thought it was a mistake that they didn't use Freddy, uh, Robert England, because that's mm-hmm. sort of like his part. The dude's still alive. Why not use him? Go for the remake? The remake, yeah. Oh, it was awful. Yeah, it's just... I love the actor that played Freddy. I just, Is that what like, you were talking just... about when you say the franchise or the other parts? Well, no, like the franchise in general. Like all know? the sequels. The other sequels are... are I've never seen them, actually. Uh, but yeah. but I, I never seen any of them. Except the yeah. one that they hired me to go back in. The sixth? Mm-hmm. New Nightmare. New Nightmare. Yeah. We tried... Was a... F- oh, go ahead. We tried to get Johnny Depp to come to that. I... I'm. I don't regret it, but I'm glad I did. I gave Wes Craven my leather jacket. Uh, okay, that was another question I was going to ask because I already saw somewhere that you don't have any of the the props or anything. No, uh, thank God. The only thing I would have had was my jeans. I was practically naked in every scene. Uh, <laughs> it was like my jeans and my leather jacket. I actually, I actually just saw that at Walmart right now. You can buy the Cadillac car. Oh really? The, the 1958 Cadillac. Yeah, they have like a little model of it. And I think Freddie's on it too. So I've been sort of like playing around in TikTok, and I and I do edit on TikTok with some nightmare people, and they loved it. Uh-huh. And uh, 
and I saw that they played the end scene of the car, and I had just remembered it that we had done this, we had done s several scenes. We did one where it was convertible, and the top closes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this one had the top already closed. You know where where the where Nancy's mom gets pulled through the door. Pulled right through the way. Yeah. <laughs> That's no, amazing. You know who you, you, you know who hand. you should interview is who? the makeup artist. He's a friend of mine, Louis. Louis. Louis's got uh, great stories. Hold on, let me see. Uh, oh, we'd love to. But uh, Louis Louis Lazar. Louis Lazar. Right he now. did. He did Freddie's makeup. Okay. And. Uh, he and I are in contact. He did Arnold's makeup. That's how we reunited. He did Arnold's oh, for uh, collateral. collateral, yeah. Nice. Oh, wow. Well, we're going to take a little break, and then we're going to come back with some fan questions. Do it. Was two one three. That was a garage band that Wes Craven hired during the time of filming to do that. Really? End, end credits theme song. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and they kind of disappeared after that. <clears throat> they were a very short lived band. Wow. But anyways, so we're gonna go into some fan questions. Do it. Deandra Laser asks, "How were the special effects done for your death scene in A Nightmare on Elm Street, and what was the rotating room like?" The rotating room was probably super inventive and the best thing I, I could ever uh, experience. <clears throat> of course, I do remember a couple things. It was at the Desi Arnaz, Lucio Ball show. Uh, <clears throat> it was done. At the old Zoetrope Theater, uh, the, the old Zoetrope Studios, I think. It was on Gower down there, Coenga. Uh, and they did the Desi Arnaz show there. And they put the thing up about the whole revolving room was, let's say, 10 feet above us on these, I don't know, these legs. And then I remember I was down below playing cards while Tina was rotating on and doing all that stuff. But in this particular case, they had the stunt woman fall into the bed and the bed was filled with blood. <clears throat> and I do remember the blood splatted on me from all that distance. 
that was creepy. The, those were the little things I remember. And then the jail, I was, it was the only time I was high in a film and I felt super bad that I perverted it. And, and uh, <laughs> I had a lot of integrity in movie making. And the one thing that I did not do is drink or do drugs, but I was completely stoned on, on, in the jail using drugs to help me get to that place of feeling remorse for mm -hmm. uh, killing, well, thinking that I killed Tina. Tina. And so it was a weird, I hated that I used the drugs. I forgave myself since, mm -hmm. but uh, I, <laughs> I never did drugs on the set. I'm proud to say, uh, mm -hmm. after that, uh, I did party when, when the job was done, but I did not. And then I went clean like 38 years ago, but I didn't, I just, it's like art. You don't pervert it. You know, you don't, uh, yeah, <laughs> there is no, I'm sorry. There's no substance that can enhance the connection that you already have as an actor. Yeah, there's no shortcut. Or, or musician or anything like that. So look, I gave you his I gave you his information and I gave him your information. His name is Louis Lazara. He was the makeup Perfect. Thank he you. was the makeup artist for Freddy Krueger. And did he just do the first film? Uh yeah, he did the first film with me. I don't know what Perfect. else he did, but he was Arnold's makeup guy too. Uh That's so cool. On collateral and a oh, whole we'd bunch love to of have him on. Definitely would love to have him. Uh, this one's from Jeremy Moorhead. What is the coolest experience you've ever had with a Nightmare on Elm Street fan? Oh, I know him. Say that again. Oh, do, yeah. Jeremy Moorhead. Yeah. What is the coolest experience you've ever had with a Nightmare on Elm Street fan? The coolest is... Money. I'm going to have to say that money is good. <laughs> the coolest? It has to be money. Some some, <laughs> some guy walked up with like 20 items for me to sign. Oh, jeez. And the coolest thing about it is he had posters I've not seen. You know, like there's a oh, okay. there's a blue poster that is a that is a it's not a it's not a it's not a let me see it's it's a rectangular poster it's blue okay. and it's it's the european version of nightmare on elm street and then oh, and, so and this rare. guy had like different languages uh, i made a ton of money on signing all those uh and then and then kids are fun like mm -hmm. the I don't know whether they were brainwashed or nothing, but God forbid you're letting a young kid watch people getting slashed. But anyway, if they get over it, they get to meet that it, the actor and then they get to realize, oh yeah, it's just fake. And yeah, so then you bad. see that the love, you know, I don't know, we're human beings too. So it's kind of nice that they, uh, mm -hmm. you know, that interaction in a, in a, in a convention is cool. Uh, and other, other times it's, it's not, it's very dark and weird, mm -hmm. but have you ever had any weird interactions? Weird interaction. <laughs> Dude, I had, by the way, you should, you, you, tell should me. <laughs> inter you should interview Charlie Fleischer. Charlie Fleischer was in. Oh, <laughs> I was at a screening. He was at recently and I just missed him. I was going to talk to him. Well, I know so him. I he's a friend and he's, Oh, you do. Okay. I fell in love with him. He's such a really, first of all, I saw him, uh, follow Robin Williams in the improv like a uh -huh. hundred years ago. And there's no one else that can follow Robin Williams, but him, <laughs> this, this guy's like killer. And this is way before they were stars, you know, they would go up on the improv and, but anyway, uh, Roger Rabbit, Charlie Fleischer is next to me. I'm sitting there. I'm completely, it's in Burbank and I'm mm -hmm. lost the, uh, happy, the Happy Days cast is is there, you know. Mm -hmm. Sammy Davis Jr.'s wife is there, you know. All sorts of people and fan. I mm -hmm. became a fan of all these people, so I would leave this. I wasn't making any money because it was it wasn't necessarily a horror convention. It was all sorts of TV convention. Anyway, this guy comes up to me, and he goes, 
Uh, so, what have you been doing lately? So, is that all you've done? <laughs> and luckily, my self-esteem is great. I don't really care. But I was like, what? And the guy's in a clown suit. And Ro and Charlie Fleischer says, why don't you get the hell out of here before I punch your little clown ass out of here? And <laughs> But Charlie's like, Charlie's badass. So, I was... I was super sensitive, like uh, going to yeah. a convention, you got to drop your ego. You got to drop your mm -hmm. ego. And oh, you totally do. And Charlie was sensing that I was like upset about something. So he stuck up for me. But then we became friends. You know, we hung out. I saw him again in another convention. And mm -hmm. he's the master. He's a, he's a genius. Um, I saw him. Nice. He's a stand up comedian. Mm -hmm. uh, and so he'll, he'll, um, he'll do the Tropicana hotel. Now you can't even do anything because of the Corona, but check him out. Charlie Fleischer. He's, uh, he does all, Oh, we love him. He does all the voices and stuff. Do you ever see him in uh, tales from the crypt demon night? No. <laughs> oh, classic. I saw him in Zodiac. Oh, Zodiac's good. Yeah. Great movie. I've only seen bits and parts of that. It's uh, Robert Downey Jr.'s in that, right? Uh, he is. Oh I, yeah, you know, yeah. Zodiac. Yeah, I, I think he was in. Maybe. It. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's been a while. That was like 2006, right? Yeah, a while ago. Yeah. But, yeah. Have you ever had any nightmares that personally rocked you to the core, or reoccurring nightmares? If so, what were they? Hey, check this out. This is the. Uh, I don't know if you can see it, but I wrote a book about uh -huh. dreams. It's called Dreams of a Master. And there you go. Obviously, I've gone the spiritual route. My teacher's John Roger, but. Uh, yeah. dreams to the core that's what i live for i love crazy dreams um the i understand them now there's the astral dreaming and then there's emotional dreaming and then it goes to much higher spiritual stuff but the reason we love like monster in a box or mm -hmm. monster in the house what's going on i it, it's in our unconscious we love it and uh, mm -hmm. every now and then, if I'm totally depressed, it has to be because I'm down or something, I'll see Purge. I think Purge is kind of like a stupid film for the unconscious to just, <laughs> you, you know, we don't want to act out things. So yeah. uh, my, my teacher once told me that you can do acting. You didn't. You do movies to act out, so you don't reincarnate and play the same role. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I get to do a movie and play a killer. I don't really have to go kill people. Play yeah. a cartel member. Play uh, this mm -hmm. or that. So, a lot of the dreams are to do it there, not here. So, uh, it's it, for me. I would say. I used to freak out about being, I tell you, remember I told you I was late to uh, Along Came Polly. Yeah, two hours. Yeah. The worst yep. dreams I used to have while I was an actor is being late and getting fired. That shit oh, is no. worse than Freddy Krueger tearing me apart. Yeah, that was my next <laughs> Cause, question. Because you got you to gotta understand, the, the, the nightmares come in the place that you care the most. <laughs> I don't yeah. obviously I don't care I don't care about Freddy Krueger. I'm not going to be having exactly. Freddy Krueger dreams because in my dream I'll kick Freddy Krueger's ass. <laughs> so you never you've never had a dream with Freddy Krueger in no. it? No. No. I'm way beyond that. I'll have dreams where the devil's kicking my ass. <laughs> but Freddy Krueger's Robert England and I'm like I'm going to I'll take the mask yeah. off and punch him in the face. Uh Yeah. <laughs> probably what is another or, worst dream? It's like uh one of the other worst dreams I used to have was falling. Falling, falling I like. No falling, I like because I'm. Uh, they call that soul traveling. You're flying. That's cool. The thing. Oh, I, I get the ones where I'm like falling off a skyscraper and I hit the cement. Oh, really? Wake up. Do oh, yeah. you? I've uh, had that a long time ago. Do you actually see? Do you experience the hit? No. Like if I if I'm falling and I hit the cement, I instantly wake up. But it just it like jolts you. It's just like you like jump up out of bed. That's yeah, that's good. That's hap that yeah, because that's happened to me too. Like if I had a dream like that, it would just jolt you, and you'd wake up, and you wouldn't see what happened. Yeah, know? they in 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 the world of uh, you know, there's all sorts of uh, 
translations on it, but in my world, that's traveling. The soul is traveling. You do you remember when Matrix came out? Matrix really explained on a physical level and visual, it told you a lot of what is possible on the other side. The bending of time. I'm not talking about all the shooting. They did all the shooting to distract you. But basically, you know, when, when Neo warps the Matrix, that's essentially what you're doing when you're dreaming. You're This is a reality here to a certain extent. But what would be cool is that the next time you're falling, enjoy it and go through the cement. I got two more from Jeremy. Horror fans are diehard and never waver their loyalty to the films they love. How have the fans of the horror genre impacted your life? They've made my life. They've paid my rent. They've, uh, <laughs> you know, and it means a lot to me. You know, like, yo, I'm going to tell you right now. That's everything. I bow down to my fans. Uh, yeah. There is a, there is a, there is, first of all, I'm not, I'm not bullshitting people. There is a mm -hmm. common exchange called cash and capitalism in this society. When you mm -hmm. guys buy the stuff, first of all, all the memorabilia stuff, I don't know who gets it. I certainly don't. But yeah, uh, because of fans and the conventions and you guys keep generationally mutating, you know, I've got guys my age and 70 year old. So you you keep me happy and you keep me uh you, you you pay my food you pay my uh, keep you afloat you keep me afloat so yeah. that's uh, me i i just honor i bow down i i don't worship you but uh i say thank you because you can't do this alone you know uh nightmare on elm street is nightmare on elm street and it continues to be because of the fans otherwise mm -hmm. its generation is dying meaning uh we're in our what what, what am i i'm like 57 you know mm -hmm. in truth our film didn't stop it kept going so that's cool mm -hmm. that's like wow um you know so how does it impact me tremendously mm -hmm. you don't still rewatch it do you i can't because everyone's wearing those weird clothes i did it for a school once <laughs> for halloween the school said hey come over and let us watch i'm like oh my god look at yeah. the hair Look at the the school, like the actual school from the film. No, we went to. By the way, I went to that school, Nightingale. Uh, no. Oh, okay. No, no, I went to. You went to Fairfax. I went to Fairfax, but I also went to that school. Uh, it's okay. it's not. Is it Nightingale? Yeah, it's it's by Griffith Park Boulevard. Okay. <clears throat> when we're walking in the front of the school, it's by Griffith Park. It's where I say. Uh, mm -hmm. Hey Tina, no, 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 no. Hey, Tina, I had a, I had a heart on. Your name was written all over. Oh, okay. In that, in that area. <clears throat> um, oh, I forgot what were you saying. No, that was that was pretty much it. You were just talking about that. So um, it was just about in, impacting your life, the horror fans. Yeah, thank you. And, and it's 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 the fans, man. I, I got and and I, I Facebook is uh, has leveled the playing field. I mean, you got to remember. Uh, there was no Facebook and stuff and agents controlled you mm -hmm. and there was no iPhone and you had a beeper mm -hmm. and Facebook, yeah. you know, when Facebook, first of all, there was no Facebook. There was, um, mm -hmm. what was it called? Uh, before Facebook, it was MySpace. MySpace. And so they, MySpace yeah. broke the mold for me. I've never done conventions. MySpace broke it. And then these two guys, I forgot, one's called Mike, uh, I forgot his last name, and this other guy. Mark Zuckerberg? No, no, these are, these are, uh, these are fans. And, oh, fans. And they were like, dude, how'd you like to go to a convention? And so I hooked up with them, and I went to my first convention. And then Facebook starts blowing okay. up. And so now you've got all sorts of groups of Nightmare on Elm Street, Freddy, and TikTok's doing it. So, dude, the whole mm -hmm. thing has mutated. It's it's in it's the platform of nightmare on elm street keeps keeps growing as 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 yeah. kids as i think as as long as kids keep as long as people keep making kids and people keep watching oh lastly lastly 
the fans are amazing because you'll go to somewhere like Kentucky or since where did I go? I went to Cincinnati or something like that. And you know, the yeah. average fan, the base of Nightmare on Elm Street, the base group, uh -huh. roughly a hundred, maybe a couple hundred. It's a lot of money for them. They come and they drop it at the convention, you know, uh, and, and they don't have money, you know, they just saved up for that and they spend it all on this memorabilia, much appreciated. Mm -hmm. Wherever I was, yeah. they drove, the average person drove about six, 10 hours to meet me. We actually did that too. Was that for Horror Hound? It was. Yeah, it was Horror Yeah, Hound. yeah. Well, for, for him though. Yeah, Horror Hound. We actually drove six hours for that because we, we're from Buffalo, New yes. York, and that's about a six hour yeah, drive yeah. from us. But it's, yeah. it's, it's incredible because every time I sign, I ask them, hey, where are you from? And they're like, oh, we're from Kentucky. And that was like eight hours. Yeah. Or I yeah. just come from Canada, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and right. Like, it's crazy. I, yeah. I got to kiss your feet. You're like, you know, you, you, you've drove seven hours. You're staying nowhere. You're signing mm -hmm. the thing. And then you leave the next day. Oh, there's even some people that'll go to these conventions from other countries. Yeah. Even I have, I have a couple, couple que or one question from a guy. He's actually one of the next ones. He, mm -hmm. um, he's from. I met him at a convention here. He's from Australia, and he's been contributing a lot of the questions to our podcast. Pretty cool. But um, if you were to be in charge of recasting recasting the Freddy Krueger role in a reboot, what mainstream actor would you choose to play Freddy? My personal choice would be Walt Goggins, and this is also Jeremy again. Okay, say that again. So he wants to know, Jeremy wants to know, if you're in charge of reca recasting Freddy Krueger in a reboot, what mainstream actor would you choose to play Freddy? And his personal choice would be Walt Goggins. Walt Goggins? Yeah, sort of a weird looking dude. Good actor, <laughs> I'm though. I'm looking him up. Oh, I see that guy. I, c I couldn't see him too much myself well, he, being Freddy. He but. probably can bring the creep on. Um, yeah. You know. He's a little older. You know, in the world of mafias and, you know, gangsters. And yeah. so I'm just going to bring you down to the base nature of things. Uh, if uh -huh. Robert England is a made man and he's a capo <laughs> in, the, in the horror films. You don't uh -huh. do anything until he passes away. That's the way I see it. Which means oh, we're the same which way. means he he should be getting the roles. He he originated it. I'm s i am saw him you know, some people don't have other things. That's what they got. So I mm -hmm. wouldn't wanna I wouldn't wanna be part of the casting. Mm -hmm. So I don't And it's mm -hmm. I don't know. It's his franchise actually. I don't how I don't know how much ownership he has for Freddy. Yeah. But uh, I don't know. I would say okay if you're going to be fair, bring them both in for auditions. Bring somebody new and and uh, Robert England. Robert England and whoever is going to contest him. So let's make it a <laughs> let's make it a competition. Let's. Yeah. Here, There's no way. Here's though. my script. Let's see if you can blow yeah. me away. And I think, hands down, Robert is first a Shakespearean actor. Oh, yeah. And so <clears throat> this guy's... Robert's a madman genius. So I don't see anyone... Someone will do it differently, but it's like, can you imagine anyone else playing, you know, Obi-Wan Kenobi other than Alec Guinness? Yeah. Uh, or... Well, yeah, go ahead. It's the same thing with the pin, with the Hellraiser franchise. They replaced Doug Bradley, and it's it's just not the same. Well, anybody with makeup, I mean, it's it's not going to be the same. But if it's like Michael Myers or Jason, they could still get another big. Yeah, they do. That's that's true. Near, there's yeah. like ten of those. Every time I go to a convention, yeah. there's like a hundred Mike Myers, right? <laughs> well, yeah, we yeah. But I don't I don't know. The dude's still living, and also, uh, Robert England is a professional actor. Oh yeah. So the dude can can do any nuance you want, you know. Uh huh. So plus he's so used to it too. But I don't know. I saw something a, a bunch of times, and I can't tell what's real or not. But I read that he is down to doing doing one more film. But I've also read that he's totally not. He doesn't want to do it again. Okay, so then really if he know. doesn't, then then game up. He retired. Then then get 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 Goggin, get that guy to do it. 
<laughs> but uh, for instance, I would give people a chance. Like, for instance, getting, uh, I mean, what a great, what's that guy that played uh, Luke Skywalker? Uh, you know, the guy waits 30, 40, 50 years and he gets recast in the franchise mm -hmm. and gets money. You mean uh, Mark, Mark Hamill? Hamill. Yeah. You know, Mark Hamill is the star. You know, when he's, I don't know which Star Wars it is, he's got his own little island in Ireland. And yeah. the girl yeah. has to climb to him. I mean, finally, he's Obi Wan Kenobi. And he's getting paid. But there were years uh, the Star Wars was not doing anything. And mm -hmm. Mark Hamill's career was like, you know, comic book. I think he was a voice guy. Yeah, speaking of that, he he was just the voice of Chucky in that remake of Child's Play. I don't know if no, you know that. No, but he's a genius. Yeah, he he's a good voice actor. Well, and yeah, he did the voice of the Joker too for many yeah. years. So yeah, but I'm not promoting that new Child's Play. That movie's <laughs> trash. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyways, uh, do you got a couple questions? I have like three more, but we'll go to yeah, you. So I've got one more fan question from Anthony Brownlee. Uh, he has two questions, actually. So, what are your fondest memories of Wes Craven and working on New Nightmare? Uh, I, I my career was dead in New. I'll go backwards. New Nightmare, and this had been years of me not seeing Wes. In the beginning, mm -hmm. after the movie, what uh, Nightmare? Uh, Wes and I played racquetball all the time. And yeah. I felt bad beating him. You know, he would win. We had this relationship. It was fun. We'd go out to yeah. eat. He was like my dad, essentially. <clears throat> How are you doing? And then I was mad at him for a long time that he didn't cast me, you know, and things. Like, he was casting. He was doing. He did more Nightmares. And then uh scream came out or i know what you did last summer i don't know which one of those he did so i was like yo man i could use a break <clears throat> then i stopped hanging out with him i did i did go to him and say look this was the best i'll play you racquetball if i win you give me a vampire in brooklyn give me a roll in yeah that. and then he's like fine so I beat his ass. He gives me an audition. I get a, I, I, we improvise, me and this actor improvise. Eddie Murphy's a vampire and he guts us. We're, we're two cops. And, uh, and I make the, the thing longer and, and I stick out in the movie. Again, it's all about stealing the scene. And uh, so that you don't get cut out. See, that's the whole thing. And so then the, the last thing was I called him. And I said, hey, I want to be in New Nightmare. I'll give you the leather jacket. So you put me in it. I didn't have to give him the leather jacket, but I did. So uh, I, there I am in the funeral with Heather and Amanda. And, but that would be the last time I see him. You know, he had open heart surgery. I saw him after that. Yeah. But, um, you know, he got busy, you know, and I didn't. And so our, our, you know, we, we, uh, but he's always my dad, my, my Hollywood dad. Who's yeah. We're bummed. We never got to started meet him. my career. <laughs> then yeah. I didn't know that he had cancer and he just died mm -hmm. that, that year that he died. We had a reunion in a, uh -huh. in a convention. It was the best convention ever. Everybody was there. It was like friends. It's great. Yeah. Stephen Emery wants to know about that particular scene in New Nightmare. He said, did he have a bigger role in Wes Craven's New Nightmare, and did it get cut, or was it just the glimpse at the funeral? Just the funeral. That yeah. we were, I was confused about the script of what was it, Freddy Krueger is coming back alive, and that we were all actors. I forgot what it was. <laughs> but it, It's a pretty bizarre movie, but it's, it, it's fun. Any, it was, <laughs> basically, we were all helping Wes Craven to get back and make money because uh -huh. of the franchise you know essentially it's a bob shea and wes craven relationship bob shea was the owner of new line yeah so the guys like made a billion whatever and wes this was wes's chance to make some money back that he never really touched on the franchise 
that was all mm -hmm. yeah i don't know I, I it's so foggy but he was in and out and then he was back in on that new nightmare he got to write it he got to direct it and he was the boss yeah so anthony brownlee's other question is out of all the films you've done horror drama and comedy what has been your best acting experience to this date? I'd have to say I should have stuck with comedy because I thought I could be like a serious actor. And what is what is the serious? What would you say? What is the serious role? Oh no no! He said, "What has been your best acting experience to date in like your whole career? Like your all-time favorite." I did a movie called Spiritual Warriors where I got very meta I got very uh metaphysical. Uh, and I produced I co produced, co wrote with John Rogers, Spiritual Warriors, and I led a bunch of people to do second unit on top of the pyramids mm -hmm. in Egypt, in Syria, before all this mm -hmm. nonsense. And and in in Jordan, the Petra. You remember the um, Indiana Jones movies? Petra is that the thin rock where Indiana, where Indiana Jones rides horses with his dad at the end. Well, that's called Pet. Oh yeah, that's called Petra. Yeah. I think the best thing that I experienced was making that movie as an actor, as a producer as a leader and go to crazy locations there's nothing better than making movies in exotic locations like nobody oh, nobody's going to ever tell you that they filmed on top of the pyramid at the giza the yeah. great pyramid everybody did it remember hoppers or loopers they did it on green screen mm -hmm. we did it we shot it eight times to get different angles of me climbing the great pyramid uh we're on the Nile, we're on a Nile boat shooting. We're in crazy Egypt and we're in also Syria where you remember the ISIS mm -hmm. destroyed an old Roman town called Palmyra. That has to be hands down the best, one of the best things I got to do in collaboration with friends and exotic locations are crazy. Mm -hmm. that, that film came out in like 2007, right? I haven't it seen it yet. Out I did it. In, we started shooting 2014. Came out 2007. Yeah, and it okay. got sold, so it's off the market. But I'll send you the link if you ever want it. But it did. It didn't yeah, do sure. anything in terms of money, but it was a great accomplishment. Good story. Of great stuff I did. David Rayner directed it, and it was John yeah. Roger produced it and wrote it. It was great. And then from then on, the career went downhill because I, I just. <laughs> was disillusioned didn't want to do it anymore and mm -hmm. and for, what are you doing now i write i speak i do counselings and zoom the the virus has turned me into a pretty badass zoomer so yeah uh, i still have, i've done i've done that this once this is the time to I'm telling like you, this is the time to adapt to a whole different model oh right that's why we started this. We launched this podcast right during oh, the coronavirus. Do it. Is this the, the, it's the smartest the thing smartest in the world, thing right? In the world. Like the amount of connections we can make. And, and just, by the way, yeah, just our artists the word are out there. dying to talk to someone because they're all lo in lockdown. No, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. That's why we're capitalizing. So do it. <laughs> you, and, and, <laughs> I hate to well, say no, it. You don't hate to say it. Say it. Because yeah, I don't. Fuck the, that. <laughs> the young people, uh, you know, you uh, not even young. It, you, it's a problem if you think this is an obstacle. It's it's unlimited if you think this is an opportunity. You yeah, know, for think sure. Steve Jobs. You know, you're going to be able to make everything mm -hmm. you think of. So win, like my teacher mm -hmm. says, win in your fantasies. Mm -hmm. So when you hit me up for this, I'm like, dude, I'm not doing anything. So that's probably every artist's right. response that you could probably yeah. tap into. Dude, I've got nothing to do. I can't leave. We've had a couple actually, believe it or not, not get back to us. And they they actually said yes and then just never got back, including another Elm Street person. I'm not even going to say who it is, but kind of kind of bummed me out. Yeah, those, those I can't but. control. I mean, I, I could get the word out to Charlie Fleischer. He'd be really fun to 
Oh, he'd be amazing. And, uh, I think my friends have a funny story with him too, Mike and Sophia. But he's a he's a genius, and so but I don't know much actors. Uh, but you know, but if you yeah. go to TikTok, it's a good uh, way to see what actors are doing. You can figure out what's yeah, and then. I don't think they use Facebook, but you can see Instagram, see what they're up to. Mm -hmm. But I like to see what they're up to and then see if I could mm -hmm. keep up, you know. But yeah, I do. Mm -hmm. I do spiritual counselings. I speak on my book. Uh, I have tomorrow. I have a course that I thanks to Zoom. I usually fly uh -huh. to Russia, but I'll be doing a course uh, for free to Russians and then a course yeah. on on dreaming and things like that on uh with bulgarians in two weeks oh cool so it's all right we got we got two more we got one from jeff chang yeah. says other than nightmare on elm street what role is the most often recognized by people and one of my favorite 80s flicks is gotcha does he have any fond or funny moments from film yeah that? jeff canoe is uh the director of gotcha gotcha happens to be one of my favorites i would have to say mm-hmm because I'm I'm broke, I'm somewhat barely making it. They give me a passport, and I'm in Paris making out with chicks, and so, <laughs> and and I and and it's 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 got to be for a kid from the hood, changed my whole life, mm -hmm. Uh, mm -hmm. and that would be what I do now. I. I have a girlfriend, so there's not a lot of chicks. It's just one one fiance, but basically, mm -hmm. I travel the world, uh, and it never stopped. Once you, I think it was Mark Twain that said, "Traveling lowers ignorance." Uh, so, gotcha, changed my life. But Linda Farantino was amazing, and then Anthony Edwards from ER. So, gotcha. Jeff Canoe is probably one of the most underrated directors. Great director. Mm -hmm. And uh, he helped me create the Carlos, Carlos the terrorist role, because I was mm -hmm. getting women into bed by pretending I was Carlos the terrorist, and I asked Jeff, you know, who is that? And then it was like, the the Carlos the terrorist was very famous at that time. He was for hire all over the world to place bombs, so I just came up with a line that. I, when I didn't want the girl to talk, I would say, shh, say no more. And I would create it. <laughs> my name is Carlos. Uh, I need you to come to my hotel. <laughs> and then she would say, but I can't <laughs> shh, say no more. And so that was all Jeff Canoe giving me those ideas. And then then that became known, those lines. And then the, the last thing is the I'm gay line. Everybody, people will come up to me and go, I'm gay. <laughs> come on say it man come on say it. you know like Arnold Schwarzenegger's <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger's line is like I'll be back and mine is Ange. and uh, <laughs> so I love it oh we still love the up yours with a twirling uh, up lawnmower, yours with a twirling line. lawnmower. Hard, to, hard to put on an 8x10 you know like I'll have fans come up to me and go yo <laughs> Jesu love what you're doing can you sign this quote and it's like up your nose with a twirling lawnmower Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that's that's probably I think that's Kellen's favorite line. I mean, it's it's such a great way to like start the movie, though. It's like you know, right in the but, beginning, it's just I, like okay, we already. But like I this really guy. love uh, Wes's uh, Wes is clean. You know, he's a clean guy. So you know, we're we're yeah. it was you know you're making movies. You don't want to say hey up your nose with a big you know. You don't want to say nasty things because everybody now. Oh, yeah. And and he went. I think it's a PG movie, right? He cleaned it up. You know, when you when you become a producer and a writer, you start to learn like, ooh, that word's going to make me R. Yeah. Yeah, it's not too bad. Definitely not. But um, this is from Fred Heads. I'm not sure if you know about that, but there's a documentary <coughs> in the works about Nightmare on Elm Street fans and the impact of Nightmare on Elm Street on pop culture called Fred Heads. Wow. And what are they want to know, what are some fan interactions or moments? You already answered that. Uh, okay. When did you realize that A Nightmare on Elm Street was going to be a horror classic? Is that pretty much? <coughs> I say almost? no. I was. I say when I went to the conventions, when I had interact, I didn't know anything actually. Okay. 
Heather and Amanda, yeah. they've been going apparently uh, there's like career conference people and they roll uh -huh. up in their suitcase and pop up the whole thing. <clears throat> and these two kids, like I told you, um, sent me to a couple and now the girl Stacy Lee works with me, but I said, I don't want to do any conventions. So there's a guy now that you send all the items to and they'll, they'll give it to me and I'll sign it, meet somewhere. It's much, it's much cheaper. And also I think it's cheaper for the person. They don't have to fly or drive, mm -hmm. but it, it, but you ruin the, the meet and greet. That's kind of fun. The, I would say the, um, uh Oh, I had a brain fart. So what was, it? Oh, when did I know conf, uh, I, did, I probably, I did five conventions. Okay. So the conventions mm -hmm. are cool in the U S then you're, then you get yeah. blown up in your head. When you go to the German yeah. convention, I got to go to the Germany one and I got uh -huh. to go to the UK one and there's nothing more than, you know, Hurts have you ever seen the Peaky there. Blinders? Oh, the show? No, I well, heard Wait great, till though. you have a Peaky Blinder Birmingham because I did a show in Birmingham uh -huh. and then you got the Birmingham <laughs> and the Nightmare on Elm Street and you get the Peaky Blinder. It's like a Peaky Blinder asking you for an 8 by 10 a oh, fucking oh hell, hell, nightmare in Am Street. And then they, you know that it's <laughs> you're global. Okay, one thing is to have somebody from Indiana sign something, which is cool. You get I had a couple bootleggers show up with no teeth mm -hmm. drinking bootleg I thought they were gonna die. They were drinking bootleg mm -hmm. alcohol. They just made it. And I smelled it oh. and I and they said, Don't drink that, you'll go blind. But they did they just got I think they just <laughs> drove up. <laughs> They got my autographs, got my, dude, I love these guys. Okay. That's simple. But then you go to, yeah. you can go to Germany. You get serious people. That is, is, I haven't done Australia convention, but, or Asia, but a uh, Japan, I, I did some things for some fans, but it was off the hook in Germany and UK. That's how I knew that it was a global intellectually you know things okay all right they made a billion dollars and they made mm -hmm. 19 series and that's intellectual I, okay i heard it but when i experienced it is when i did the conventions you know uh new jersey the one in new jersey is that hound uh new jersey would be like monster yeah mania. I, did, I did monster yeah. mania and i did a, a few indiana and then you're like holy crap and then the world and yeah. then that's so that's my answer is there was nothing better to me. I, I mean, I love the U.S. The conventions in the U.K. were great because mm -hmm. you it's a whole other culture there. Mm -hmm. Are you still open to doing them if it's like local? If it's local in L.A. for sure. Or Burbank. OK. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we're in Burbank too. We actually we live oh, on you do? Oh, I love it. <laughs> yeah. All those all those yeah. the street I worked on all the time. Is is that by oh, all yeah? of where all of high or, or close to the studios? Olive Avenue. We're like, closer to like in downtown. The in the hill. By like, closer to downtown. By yeah. Main Street? Uh wait, Main downtown. Street. Like Oh, all of downtown. Glen Oaks. Glen Oaks. Yeah, yeah like where all the theaters are and stuff. Glen Oaks is Glendale? Like, no, no, no. This is still oh, Burbank. Yeah, Glen Oaks and like uh, like San Fernando, oh, yeah, Glen Oaks. Oaks. Yeah, those those major streets. Yeah, yeah. I live in Magnolia. It's like yeah, right I did a there. lot of stuff down there. Uh, mm -hmm. um, there's a lot of post production, Burbank and NBC. Yeah, we got Nickelodeon, Disney, Warner Brothers. They're Disney, all on the street. ABC. Yeah, yeah. So let's promote your autographs that you're selling, dude. Uh, you have it mm -hmm. written uh, basically. I do, and, yes. And I took photos of the uh of of the eight by tens. If anybody wants it, they just PayPal me and I get I get their address mm -hmm. and I send it. I've been doing that. And uh for items, collectors items, I gave the address, uh the email and the phone number to Todd and Nicholas. And they mm -hmm. they gather it up and then they meet me somewhere and I just sit there and sign items like uh, Freddie's gloves, things like that I don't want to be responsible yeah. for. But simple things like eight yeah. by ten. I write a quote. I sign it. I mm -hmm. get you get a photo of me taking the photo, uh, signing the photo, so it's authentic. 
and then I put mm -hmm. it in an envelope and I ship it to you. And uh, 3750 covers the envelope. Uh, it gives me food for the day, and uh, <laughs> I call it. I, call, well, I had a, I had a really cool name, Quarantine Horror Convention. <laughs> so uh, the horror conventions come to me. Boom, boom. I sign it. I think Todd's got enough items. Sometime in May we'll meet. But you have his. You have uh -huh. his, Anybody asks for it, just give him the stuff. Okay. Yeah, I'm gonna actually throw it in the intro. I'm gonna redo the intro and throw uh -huh. in all the. The Venmo and everything, PayPal. And if there's anything I can help but, you uh, with, let me know. Oh, for sure. And uh, is there anywhere the fans can find you on like social media or anything? Uh, follow you? Spiritual Warrior on Instagram. Okay. Uh, and I'm my name, uh, Jesu Garcia, on Facebook. And mm -hmm. I'm on TikTok. I'm trying to get into. I don't do. Uh, uh, naked things or anything like that. I just do Nightmare on Elm Street. So I didn't realize TikTok <laughs> was almost like Grinder for a minute. Is it really? See, I, I'm on there too, but I haven't really used it that much. I made like well, four the girl, of them. the girls are, you know, they're. I don't know what they're doing. Uh, but I went and I tried to figure out where's my niche. Uh, so I saw this whole mm -hmm. nightmare crew there of people playing. Mm -hmm. um, they play the nightmare. Uh, Maybe the the girls jumping rope, one and two, okay. and, two. and then <laughs> one, so two. and then you can do duets. It's kind of cool. They have a girl or a guy <laughs> tucked in bed, thinking that Freddie's coming with a red light, and yeah. they have that in the background. Yeah. And then you can do it next to them that you're in bed too. So I did one where I'm walking while the girls talking about Nightmare on Elm Street with Freddy Krueger. Anyway, that. She loved mm -hmm. that as a fan, I duetted with her, and that's kind of cool. So, uh, yeah. so there's people on there. They're doing something like I saw. I saw um, Bruce Willis. He played back uh -huh. a little bit of Die Hard, but he's got a uh -huh. stuffed animal on his shoulder, and he's got a blow dryer, <laughs> and he's shooting. He's shooting off of his balcony with oh the Die God. Hard <laughs> with the Die Hard <laughs> soundtrack. You know, like. Oh my god! I never would have thought he would have been on there. I no, they got Bruce out. Willis on there. It's pretty creative. Tom Cruise. Uh, so I wanted the I wanted to know how I can niche in this uh, and stay cool, you know, because it's all young people. Mm -hmm. Are you on Cameo by chance? I tried to. Nobody hires me for Cameo. If there is a way to like promote that for you, that is like the best way to make money right now. I got Eric Roberts to do that, and they made like five or ten grand in a week. Wow. No, uh, <clears throat> I tried to. I don't know what's going on. Uh, Cameo. I don't know how that. I'll try to. Uh, I'll get on yeah. it. Sure. I I think I'm on it. Cameo. I see the app. You got to get yourself under like the horror section because I, I look in the horror section all, all the time just to see who's got added there, and I never saw you on like that particular section, but that might change it for you. Is there? Do you, okay, I'll do it. Do you uh, tell it the genre you want to be in? I think so. I think so. Unless they just categorize you there, but I think there's a way. I know a couple people that are in there, so I can message them and see, and I'll let you know. Sure, I'll I'll go ahead and put myself on there. Yeah, no, it's a great way to just make some extra money. And then, so is Jesu uh, Garcia official? Is that another Instagram of yours? Is that fake? Jesu is that's my. Oh, that's okay. yours too. That's the act. That's so, the that's, that's the, that's the actor part. The actor part. Okay. Jesu Garcia official. Okay. And then Spiritual Warriors is the the spiritual guy that travels the world. Yeah, that's what you're mainly doing now. Okay, perfect. Not much traveling since the uh, Corona. Oh, it's screwing everything up. We had a trip to Vegas actually planned, and that got canceled. So, yep. Not not like that matters. It's four hours away, but so. I love Vegas, man. I tried to I tried to get in there. I was hoping that they would open it up, and hotels <laughs> would be like forty dollars a yeah, night. Yeah, right. Yeah. Well, but then again, it's been great having you on the show, and you know we've been fans of the franchise for years, and. It, Scared the Thanks, sh scared dude. the shit out of me as a kid. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> no, yeah, we love all your projects, not just Nightmare on Elm Street. Yeah, all of them. Appreciate it. Yeah. yeah. I, no, I'm really I'm, I'm I'm impressed. You asked me uh, on a bunch of films because 
most fans are like they just know rod so what yeah. have, so what have you done after nightmare yeah right i was like uh just google it now yeah well you know i saw collateral damage in the theater when i was a kid i was just like yeah. probably like nine or ten when it came out but it was oh my it was God. amazing and yeah yeah of course along came Polly. that was like 2004 i saw that like when it came out um Along Came Polly was such a fun movie. Such a fun movie. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, you got a good so one. You got a good one liner out of it. <laughs> <laughs> do you do you sign I'm autographs? Gay. I'm gay. <laughs> I've never I've never done it, but I know but I'm really glad for Along Came Polly. Yeah. Because if Nightmare goes down, uh twenty years later I've got the I'm gay line. And oh, that perfect. can go that can support me. If they do I don't know. Along came poly conventions. We got to get I'm gay on TikTok. Like somehow, like that's we funny. gotta like dub something that's like super funny and just put that in there. Oh my god, that's a great, that's a line. good, yeah. that's a good viral video right there. <laughs> yeah, I guess just make because that's what they do. People will they just dub it. Yeah, the yeah they dub. It used to be called something else, but they take Vine, uh, maybe Vine. It, it, yeah, it, think so. you dub off films and, and songs, and then mm-hmm. you put yourself up on screen. Yeah. But that would be funny. Why, why don't I dub some of the lines that I... That <laughs> up your nose. <gasps> oh, yeah. Or you could even like swap some of your roles. Like You could somehow like dub over Rod's lines and put, I'm gay. <laughs> like, that I, would be funny. I don't know how you could do that, but if, if somehow like you picked like the right mouthings, like... And just make it match up. your up. nose with a rubber angle. Yeah. <laughs> like a smash up. That, yeah. That'd be golden. Like, literally. Oh my God, that's a great idea, dude. You gave me a great idea that we can do it on Nightmare on Elm Street and have, have the fans uh, do the words. Yeah. No, absolutely. <laughs> I have a leather jacket. I got to do it on the street. Oh, you got like a similar, <laughs> similar one? I got a similar, yeah, but a newer yeah. one, you know. If you ever need... The leather, I find... Can you imagine the leather jacket's really old? Yeah. And you said you said you gave that to somebody? I gave it to West. To West, dude. yeah. So And he passed. So we don't know where it is now? No. Uh. I would imagine it's oh look, I'm in uh Okay, I see myself under Jesu Garcia in Cameo. Okay. And how do I do you know how I can put it in uh in horror? Um uh. Should it be under Rod Lane or? Let me see. I can message yeah, a couple people. I know Alex Vincent's in there. And I didn't set the price. Somebody did. Tell me if if it's too much and what yeah. what price should I set? What at? is your price? I'm trying to look for you. It said a hundred. Somebody put that there. Oh yeah, I, I would take that down for sure. I, what, I, what should it be? Um, uh, I think generally like forty, thirty, forty would be probably better because then you'll great. sell a ton of them. You know what I mean? Somebody put that down. I don't know who did that. So forty. Yeah, because okay, there I put it in. Okay, right. I see you right now. Yeah. You see, Jesus Garcia. Yeah, you're like walking along the beach. Is that it? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right here. See, see on the screen. What's that? Is that you? Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, how did you get that video though? That comes up because you you put that in when you made the account, and then when I whenever somebody like clicks on your name, they, that comes right up. And it's like you Ooh. introducing them to your cameo account. Yeah. And can I see that video? Yeah, I can send you this link. Here, one second. So just let me know if I'm in the category, and I'll fix it. But if yeah, you if can you're not, share I can that, even contact cameo, cameo. Yeah, I can figure it out for sure. Yeah, I remember I talked to the uh, the guy a, a request from Matt. Mm-hmm. I talked to the guy that was the owner mm-hmm. when they were first setting it up. Oh, real of Cameo? Wow. Yeah. The I. Anyway, it's pretty recent. I mean, it's all right, it's dude. Yeah. All right. Thank you so much for being with us today. Seriously, you, man. Thank you. And anything you can do on Cameo, I'm in. Yeah, for sure. No, <laughs> I'll figure out what the the problem is with the horror category. Thank you, man. Thank you, Ed. Yeah, yeah. No, thank you. And uh, hopefully, hopefully, when this is all cleared up, maybe if you ever come out of retirement and do acting again, we'd love to have a chance to work with you. 
Yeah, and if not, we'll yes. see you uh, in your dreams. Right on, Kellen. Take care.